thank you very much and welcome to Games Master. Now I know it's cold out there, but if you set your chilly bits out in front of this show, they'll thaw out in no time. For this is the programme that is to television what a knob of hot butter is to a crumpet. On tonight's show, we will attempt to unwrap video games from the neon swaddling clothes and deliver news, tips and reviews into the matronly bosom of your living room. But first, our initial game playing challenge, and here to set it, I must call up Games Master from a cybernetic pleasure dome. Greetings. So, once again, you've tuned in to pit your wits against one of my little challenges. <laughs> you really are gluttons for punishment, aren't you? Lifting us off tonight is a young superhero by the name of Mega Man 2. Your task is to guide him through the satanic heatman level in under three minutes without losing a life. For ultimate success, you need to leap from block to block over molten lava, avoiding all manner of metallic villains. Negotiate secret chambers where blocks appear at random, and finally, polish off Heatman himself, a most troublesome end of level guardian. <laughs> Let's hope this little challenge won't be too hot for you to handle. This is an awesomely difficult challenge. Down in Heatman's chambers, all manner of things can get scorched. Trying to keep cool amid the heat is our very own Mega Man. All the way from the chilly wastes of Muswell Hill, Please give a succulent Games Master welcome to Nick Cairncroft. <laughs> welcome to Games Master, Nick. Thank you very much. Now, Nick, Mega Man, is that one of your favourite games? No, oh. unfortunately. <laughs> Are you pretty confident about the challenge? Well, I hope so. The, the easiest bit is probably the start, the hardest bit is the end. So. Okay, well, that sounds a bit, um, a bit logical. Yeah. And, um, okay, not one of your favourite games, but you're quite confident about the challenge. I hope so, yeah. Okay, if you'd like to go and sit in our lovely um, pine wood hot seat. And here to help me commentate on this game, from Mean Machines magazine, is Nintendo expert Julian Jazz Rignall. Julian, welcome back to Games Master. Thank you. Um, any general tips for Nick on this game? Just lightning reflexes and uh, just a bit of luck, really. Okay, are you ready, Nick? You know the challenge. You have to defeat Heatman at the end of the level in three minutes or less. It may sound a long time, but as Jazz says, you have to go like the clappers. So, are you ready, Nick? Yes. Off you go. Okay, now there goes Mega Man ducking in a wee bit. What's this first thing he's been shooting? Um, they're uh, sort of helicopter spring heads, and basically he's got to blast those out of the way, otherwise they'll start leaping up and down on his head. Okay, they've been joined by little blue cute revolving things. Are they quite hard as well, Julian? Um, yes, yeah, so, so they track you along a lateral movement, and basically if you don't shoot them again, they'll come down on your head. And... Oh my god, he's just been wiped right into the lava, but he's picked himself up quite well as the young man from Muswell Hill. Yeah, he was quite lucky. When you get hit, you uh, sort of uh, you keep in invincible for a few minutes and uh, a few seconds rather. And uh, basically, uh, he survived that one. Right, they're one of these cute little hedgehogs. Shoot like them, they, oh my God. They, they shoot them, they spring up. So uh, must be avoided at all costs. Absolutely. Now, how's he doing? He's um, 40 seconds gone. He's successfully manoeuvred past that spiky jack-in-the-box hedgehog there, and he's down to another little cave here. What happens here? Uh, this is this is the very tricky bit. Basically, the um, the blocks appear in a set pattern and you've oh. got to predict where they come. He did that very well, but Excellent. there's tougher ones to come. Excellent. OK, we've finished a minute, a third of the way through. Jazz, how's he going? Not too badly at the moment. Again, here's, here's the tricky bit. Now he's got to negotiate all these, these invisible and uh, reappearing blocks. I see, and if he missed time, he can well be trapped. Yes, at the moment, he's, he's mistiming very slightly and the baddies are closing in. Oh my god, it's all getting very tense. One and a half minutes gone, halfway through the challenge. <laughs> Nick, commiserations, you were yeah. doing so well that all of a sudden you slipped into a gaping chasm down to the pits of hell. What happened? Well, uh, I've had a lot of trouble with that last time. Every time you jump, it doesn't appear. Every time you want it to appear, it doesn't every time. Right. Anyway, so, it appears. Yeah, but you were so close. Jazz and I were getting really hot and sweaty up in the commentary box about it, but you just let us down. Not to worry, Nick. Have you enjoyed coming into Games Master? Yes, I have. Well, you can take all our sad thoughts and commiserations back to your pew, and thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. Round of applause here for Nick. And now, and now, while we commiserate with Nick over his loss, we're going to take a look at the latest game set to blister the fingers of children nationwide.
This week it's time to shift your gear sticks as we look at racing games. Set. Go! First stop on the Amiga, put your feet to the floor with Lotus Turbo Challenge 2. The sound and graphics really are absolutely brilliant. I mean, it showcases stuff. I think it's great fun for the, for the novice drivers, but, uh, you know, it, it tends to get a little bit boring after a while. You'll tend to find that a lot of the levels you'll complete quite quickly, quite easily, and then you'll end up seeing, well, it's just another racing game. Second on the grid tonight, burn some rubber on your Amiga in Formula One Grand Prix. Very sophisticated, certainly for the, for the Nigel Mansell, certainly for the serious races. It's very fast indeed and plays excellently. Absolutely smart with a capital S, basically. I mean, it's just like being there. Bringing up the derriere on the master system, frolic your way across the landmarks of Europe in Outrun Europa. The master system doesn't cope with 3D racing games very well indeed, but it's quite fun, if a little jerky at times. The graphics aren't fantastic, in fact, at times they're a little bit crap, but yeah, it's quite a nice game. Now for our new game section. One of this year's most eagerly awaited computer releases is Dune. Here to give us an exclusive sneak preview is Ian Mathias from Virgin Games. Dune, the game, um, it is based on the movie of the same name. The player takes the part of Paul Atreides, um, whose mission in life is to kick the Harkonnens off the planet of Dune. The Harkonnens are mining spice. Spice is the most valuable element in the universe. Um, Dune is the only planet to contain spice, so it's Paul's mission to get rid of the Harkonnens so he can mine the spice. <laughs> the strongest features of the game are the incredible graphics, the sound. The game is very, very much like we call it an interactive movie. Um, that means that the player is actually taking the part of Paul and it is very much like playing inside a movie. And finally for this week's review section, we've decided to hold a competition on the ultimate soccer simulation, Kickoff 2. All you need to do is commit your most spectacular moments of net bursting glory to disc and then send them in to us. We'll choose what we think is the best goal and the winner will receive two tickets to the Rumbleless Cup final. For details about where to send your discs and for any other information about the show, call the Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the programme. Now we go on to our celebrity challenge and here to detail it, once again, is the Games Master. Hello again. Um, I do hope you enjoyed my last little jaunt. <laughs> Wasn't quite up to it, was he? For the second of this week's challenges, I thought um, a little cross-court rallying on Pro Tennis Tour 2 would be in order. I must confess to being a bit of a cricket man myself, but of course, that game takes too long. But anyway, it mustn't ramble, and tennis it is. First person to three games wins. Give it your best shot. And here to pound their balls along the baseline tonight, we have Saeed Hersey from Mile End, and he'll be taking on former British ladies number one, Annabelle Croft. Now, um, now Saeed, you've got, you've got quite a formidable task here, up against the experience of Annabelle Croft. How are you going to handle it? Mostly by luck and probably by the hits I gave her. Right, you've got quite a firm right hand, Saeed, yeah? Well, how are you going to counter that, Annabelle, against the young pretender from Mile End? Well, I've been out running every day for this match, so I'm, I'm hopefully prepared for him, but I think he's, he's quite good. Well, but this is a game you desperately want to win, desperately, Annabelle? Desperately, yes. <laughs> okay, well, for you at home, if you want to find out who is going to win this super match, then join us after the break for some new balls and some soft forehands. If you have just joined us, Annabelle Croft is facing a serious encounter with young Saheed Hershey from Mile End. Here with me in my pulpit commentary box is the lovely Tom Watson from Renegade. Tom, what a tough encounter this for Annabelle. Well, I was watching Saeed playing earlier. He had a couple of practice games. He looks 
fairly potent in this one. I think it'll do well. Right, well, the ball boys are in position. So are we. Are the competitors ready? Yeah. Then it's time for me to call time, please. And Annabelle, when you're ready, sir. Okay, you ready? Okay, now we see Annabelle is in the red hair and Sahid is in the black hair. Oh, and Annabelle starts over the ace. What a delicious little shot there from Annabelle. Well, the interesting to look at here, Dominic, is the serving circle. This is how the player actually positions the point at which the ball will land on the service. Right. So Annabelle got an excellent okay. first serving there. Oh, well, it's, um, Sahid's up with the net and Annabelle. Oh, he smashes that from Sahid. He's, he's taking control of the net. Keeping Annabelle restricted to the base down here. Annabelle's yeah. trying to drive the ball. Oh, our skirt went up a little bit there. That was quite pleasant. And Annabelle is still stuck on the baseline trying well, to just... Well, what Annabelle really needs to do, she tried it earlier, was another lob. She needs to keep lobbing Sadie. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's 30, 30 love to the server. Yeah, you've got that. Okay. So Annabelle cross seven. A fair come on. Sadie returns. Again, oh, a nice little bloated little shot up there, and Annabelle's taking Annabelle the control at the net. The strict side. Oh, but side squeezed that one past in the centre of the court. Annabelle seven, thirty fifteen. One of the tricks to getting this game right is really anticipating where the, when the ball's going to pass the racket. And that's some. Okay. Oh, Annabelle oh, seven for the first game. Oh, and she's done a fault. Yes. Annabelle seven, seven, and it goes in sweetly. Side returns at side, runs up to the net, restricting Annabelle to the baseline. He's pounding those shots, but Annabelle sweeps the net. Well, certainly seems to be able to find, find the long shot, find the okay. mark. Now, that's Where one am I? game to love. So they've changed sides, so now Saeed is at the bottom of the screen, serving against Annabelle. Excellent the service on the line. Next right. floats that one into the baseline. Again, they're sticking to the middle of the court quite often, Tom. Oh, oh, oh and a sneaks in excellent point there, Annabelle. Me. I'm yes, well, they, they seem to be taking it fairly cautiously. I think there are going to be quite some uh, opportunities later in the game to really expand into the width of the court. OK, so Annabelle's up at the next side, trying to get the ball over. He's not working out the Oh, no! Oh, he sneaked that one in the inside. 15 all, love one. Annabelle returns that one very well. Oh, yeah. Excellent, Excellent shot there. Uh, and this, this is the width of the court coming into play now, Dominic. Okay. Oh, Annabelle floating a little lob there. And they're and still sticking to the centre of the court. Oh. Oh. Excellent play by Annabelle. Saeed was becoming quite aggressive with that one. I think the frustration of that rally was starting to tell. Okay, is it quite an easy game to get the to Tom? Oh. And, and oh. My one, I'm there we go. There, Tom. Two love. Two games love to Annabelle. What a scintillating return of serve. So Annabelle was serving to go three and love and for the match. Oh, a Excellent teasing net little play. Teasing little Excellent net play. Oh! I this. Annabelle is well on top of Saeed in this game. What a lovely serve, right there. Very good the return there, very, very good, good return to the baseline. Oh, oh yeah. I say. Annabelle, 30 love, two points, two away, points away from the match. And a lovely long deep serve again, side returns deep to her baseline. Oh, and side's up at the net, but he's retreated, maybe a wee bit scared. Oh, oh and it cost them daily, Annabelle seven, match point here. I think side's problem is anticipation here. Oh, a lovely little return. Oh, it's great. And, so he, and that's it. <laughs> Um, commiserate, commiseration, Sahid. You, you looked to be out of the game at one point, but fought back only to see it slip out your grasp again. What do you think was the crucial factor? Oh, no, <laughs> just just, just the, the skill of Annabelle perhaps told a bit, the experience at the end. Well, Annabelle, I mean, some amazing racket head control from you. There was, and wasn't I there? I couldn't <laughs> your footwork in the slightest. <laughs> couldn't believe it myself. My adrenaline was really going, but it was a lot of fun. OK, well, yeah. Annabelle, I know you've won many prizes already in tennis, but none as prestigious or indeed large as this one. You have won our amazing, mystical, golden joystick. <laughs> Now, I don't know where you're going to put that, but I'm sure you can have lots and lots of endless hours of fun with I that. Will it's do. A, so, if we just let you go, round of applause again for our loser, Saeed, and our winner, Annabelle Kroll. Yeah. And now, while I get my breath back, let's go to Games Master and see what he's got in his tips section. Hello, Games Master. Welcome to my kingdom. I am delighted to see you. And what have you got to ask me? I've heard there is a secret room on the first level of Alex Kidd. I've looked everywhere for it, but I can't find it. Is there any way you can help me? Hmm. I must admit, it's an awfully long time since I've had to preoccupy myself with Alex Kidd. However, if I recall correctly, 
There's a secret room next to the palm tree just past the third chest. Simply jump up and down to break the blocks on the ground and the room will reveal itself. Thanks a lot. Bye. On to the next, please. Hello, Games Master. Hello, and delighted to see you. I've been playing Cadaver for over a month now. I can't get past the dragon. He fries me every time. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> a good question, young man. But this is indeed a most tenacious reptile. Follow these instructions carefully. Once you're into the dragon room, call up your inventory and drink the fire shield spell to protect you. Then select the massacre spell that you should have collected from Lord Carolus' altar in the chapel and fire it to finish off this troublesome creature once and for all. Right, thanks a lot. I wish you success with this one. Right, on to the next, please. Hello, Games Master. In Turtles, I cannot get off level three. What shall I do? My, my, you are behind, aren't you? Now listen carefully. To get off level three, you need to rescue Splinter, who's in the building at the center of the map. Defeat Mega Turtle, and you'll go on to the next level. Thanks very much. Not at all. That's it for now. I do tend to tire rather easily these days. However, if you'd like to tune in next week, I'd be delighted to answer any more questions you might have. Bye for now. So, some juicy computer tidbits this week. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. After the frenzied stroke play of that tennis encounter, I felt a, a rather more sellable challenge would be timely. I have therefore opted for Zoom, a fun little game in which you need to complete a series of grids by drawing a line all around the squares. The task I've set aside for you is to complete the first grid in less than one minute. A stern test of nerve and logic. Watch out for the green hen, which will be trying its hardest to gobble you up. The first grid to complete in less than one minute. Face away. Now this is a short, sharp, spunky challenge, and I think what I'll do here is see if I can find three plucky contestants from our congregation. So if there's anyone out there who fancies the chances at the Zoom challenge, please thrust one of your arms up into the air. Oh my word, now we have quite a few people here. Uh, let me see, how about you sir, with a sensible haircut? Yes, you'll be lovely. Um, oh yes, there is a young man there, we'll have you. And uh, now one more, let's hear that lovely young lady at the back there. That's our three contestants. Give them a round of applause. Up you come. Okay, welcome to Games Master. What's your name? Scott. Scott, hello there. And our second man up. George. George, it's nice to see you. And our lovely lady contestant. Dola. Now, I think I feel like a bit of a boy-girl-boy -boy situation. So, Scott, if you play first, with Dola in the middle, and George, you can bring up the rear. Okay, so Scott, if you'd like to go up to the chair, and if you two would just like to linger around the side there, we'll crack on with our first competitor. And joining me in the pulpit is Neil West from Sega Power. Welcome, Neil. Hi, Dominic. Now, Neil, any general tips you can give our contestants for this difficult one-minute challenge? Well, looks can be deceptive, and although Zoom looks very easy, it is, in fact, very, very tricky indeed. Um, don't forget you can jump, and don't forget that you can fire at the baddies behind you. Mm -hmm. um, but apart from that, just keep running. <laughs> OK. Scott, are you ready? Then your one minute begins now. OK, and he's off. He starts in the middle of the screen. And as you can see, ah, oh, now he just picked up a banana. Now that temporarily stops the baddies, yeah? Right. Gives him a bit of a head start. Okay, he's going very, very close to this baddie here, but he's doing very well. Ten seconds gone already. He's covered in quite a nice little portion to begin with, Neil. He has. The trouble here is, I mean, if you were to look at it logically, you could probably find a very easy way of colouring it all in. Right. Um, but unfortunately, the baddies spoil any plans of doing okay. it. Okay, like oh that. my god, and the baddies coming right up at him. Oh, but he's just managed to avoid him there. Back 26 the seconds gone, and he's doing all right, but he's got to get some more of these squares flashing here. That's right, it gets very, very difficult. It's easy to do it at the start, but when you're only left with a couple of blocks to fill in in different colours of the maze... Oh my it's all god, over. and he's gone. He's been gazumped by the green hand. Can we have our second contestant, please? The lovely Dolat. <laughs> now, Neil, what tips can Dolat glean from Scott's lacklustre performance there? Well, Scott took a gamble. He realised that time was running out, so he just went for it, threw caution to the wind, and unfortunately got chomped by a ghost. So what Dolat's got to remember is even no matter how short time gets, there's no point running into a monster. She's just got to keep well away from them. Exactly. So Dolat's got to play it safe. Are you ready, Dolat? 
Then your one minute begins now. Okay, the crowd are cheering on Dola. I think she's a bit of a crowd favourite here. Yep. We've got this banana appearing near. Now that freezes it the green hand. That's right. It freezes the monster for a few precious seconds. Now Dola's got the right idea. The monster's slower than you are. Remember that. Right. So if you can keep going from the top of the screen. Oh to the bottom no, of the screen, no! She looks like she's trapped in the corner. No, she's escaped from there. You were saying, Neil. That's right. If she can keep doing what she's doing, which is going from the top to the bottom, back to the top again, the monster can't keep up with her. Oh no! Oh, and just as we thought she was going well, Dola has zumped as well. Dola, your challenge is over. Please make way for George. Now, Neil, was there anything positive about Dolat's performance? Um, not for Dolat, no. <laughs> but what George can learn is that you, you must jump. Okay, let's hope George could take that on board. George, you're our final contestant. Are you ready? Then your one minute begins now. Okay, right down the bottom there. Nice start. One in already. Two squares already there. Okay, now he's got to make a grab for that banana. Take the banana and he'll leave the hands behind. Okay, I'm afraid he's just missed it. He didn't uh, leave okay. there for no apparent reason. But he can grab the magic mushroom. Now, if he can grab the mushroom, that will speed him up. And when you're racing against the clock, that will help Nine to Oh, very, very important. Okay, 20 seconds gone. A third of the way through the challenge. He's called in a couple. How's he doing, Neil? He's not doing too badly at all. Although he hasn't actually got that many blocks flashing yet, he's coloured in a lot of lines. Now, grab that clock. That's it. That's oh! Oh, he's in the frozen. green hand. Now he can colour in as many as he can while he's got the chance. OK, well, he's just about halfway through. He's got, in fact, 23 seconds left. He's going to have to motor now. What's the sweet here? The sweet is just another icon. It doesn't do anything because he's already frozen the hand. Right. Yeah? Otherwise, that would have been oh, useful. Oh, but my one, he's got half a screen full there. Oh, he's got 12 seconds left. This is going to be very, very close. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Oh, I four, don't think he's going to make three, it. He's not going to make two, it. Oh, and he got eaten at the last just minute. Bought Disaster. Oh my word, he was so close, but George has been scoffed. Well, what can I say? That was a very, very tough challenge, but I was left unfulfilled. Scott, plank. Dola, plank. George, you came so very, very close, but ultimately, plank. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our three planks. And that's it for tonight. It's time now for a lovely cup of orange zinger. And we'll see you all again next week for another Games Master. Good night. Now for that information about the Games Master Club. We have newsletters, free t-shirts and competitions, including the Games Master Golden Goal Competition. The prize, two tickets to the Rumbelows Cup Final. The number to call, and please make sure you dial accurately, is 0891 600 123. Lines are open around the clock.